In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the period of a mass spring system when given the displacement, velocity, and acceleration. The question reads, an oscillating mass spring system has a displacement of 10 centimeters, a velocity of negative 12 meters per second, and an acceleration of negative 20 meters per second squared. What is the period of the system? Now before we can find anything related to the period, we need to somehow start modeling this scenario into an equation. Shown here is what a spring motion equation looks like for displacement. Depending on the information, the equation will either be modeled using sine or cosine. For example, we are told that at time zero, the displacement is 10 centimeters. Generally, the sine function at zero outputs to zero. Notice the graph on your screen for reference. Cosine, on the other hand, is at its maximum when t is equal to zero. So, so far, modeling the scenario using cosine is a better fit for displacement. Let's write that down. So I have x is equal to a for the amplitude, cosine omega t. t represents the time, and omega, this Greek letter, represents the angular frequency. We're also told that the velocity at this displacement is negative 12 meters per second. The velocity function is found by taking the derivative of this displacement function. If we took the derivative of this equation, we would get v, or the derivative of x, is equal to a omega, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'll write down negative sine omega t. And we can rearrange this so that the negative is at the front. It's up to you. Now, subbing in t is equal to zero into this function would give us an output that is zero, when in fact, we're expecting it to be negative 12 meters per second. The reason why it would be zero is because, again, we have sine. So obviously, this is a problem, because had we started with sine for the displacement function, the output would have been zero, and that wouldn't have made much sense given what we're told about the initial displacement. And starting with cosine, as you see here, leads us to a situation where the velocity doesn't make any sense. To rectify this situation, we have to consider a phase angle, which in mathematical terms is a horizontal translation. The phase angle is usually written within the cosine function, where I'll represent it using the Greek letter phi. The phase angle allows us to either use sine or cosine from the start without any problem because it absorbs the 90 degree difference between a sine and cosine function. In case you forgot what a phase angle does, it shifts the wave left or right. A negative phase angle shifts right, a positive phase angle shifts left. So if we go ahead and take the derivative of this new function, given that it now has a phase angle, our derivative will look very much the same. Let me just go ahead and rearrange things. This negative is a factor, so I'll write down negative a omega sine omega t plus the phase angle. This function, even if we place t is equal to zero, depending on the phase angle, can still give us an output that is negative 12. Now taking the derivative of the velocity function gives us the function for acceleration. So if I take the derivative of this function that's in black, I have the derivative, which is v prime, and that's our acceleration, is equal to, the derivative of sine is cosine. I have negative a omega squared cosine omega t plus our phase angle. Now, if you're having difficulty understanding how we take the derivatives, I do have a video, and the link is now displayed on your screen in case you're curious. And in that video, I show you how you actually take the derivative of these functions. I'm not going to waste your time here. That's not the point. All right, remember the goal of this question is to find out the period. And we can find the period if we somehow find the angular frequency denoted with the Greek letter omega. Using this equation and either the velocity equation or the acceleration equation, we can find out what omega is. So let's take the very first equation the displacement is 10 centimeters, and we need to make it into meters because everything else is in meters. 10 centimeters into meters is 0 0.1. So I have 0 0.1 in for x, and that's equal to a cosine 
in the inside part. The reason why I'm choosing this equation as opposed to velocity is because this equation is also in cosine, so it makes the solving a little bit easier. I'll substitute negative 20 into a. I have negative a omega squared cosine in the inside. We have a system of equations here. We need to solve for omega. And that's not hard to do. We solve for a in each of these equations and set them both equal to each other. So for this very first equation, solving for a is 0 0.1 over cosine and its angle. For this equation, we have negative 20 over negative omega squared cosine omega t plus phi. Remember, that's a for the first equation. That's a for the other. Watch this. This negative and that negative cancel out. This cosine and that cosine cancel out. Just pretend we multiplied both sides by cosine omega t plus phi. They would have disappeared. Solving for this, we get omega squared is equal to 20 over 0 0.1. Square rooting both sides. Let's find out what happens. The square root of 20 divided by 0.1 makes roughly 14.1, so 14 seconds. If we need the period, we take this value and we divide 2 pi over 14 seconds. So taking 2 pi and dividing it by 14 gives us our period as roughly 0 0.45. 0 0.45 per second, or cycles per second. You may also find the phase angle, if you like, what we represented as phi, by setting t is equal to 0 in two of the equations, doing it the same way as we did here, solving a system of equations. And you should end up with a phase angle of 83 degrees. If you have any questions about how to find 83 degrees, let us know in the comment section below, and I'll gladly show you in a separate video.